Ari Kulman Bob Cloud Service episode, we'll look at a broad overview of the MCS concept of a mobile backend. What they do, why they exist, and what you can do with them. G'day, I'm Chris Muir from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. In MCS, platform APIs, such as push notifications, and custom APIs written in Node.js, are made available to specific mobile applications by publishing them in through one or more MCS mobile backends. From the mobile developer's perspective, this allows them to consume these APIs without having to give undue consideration to how they are implemented within MCS. A good way to think of the mobile backend in MCS is the mobile backend is the gateway to the MCS APIs and indirectly any end enterprise systems that MCS connects to. There are essentially no other touch points to MCS. Everything must go through the MCS mobile backend. Now, of course, mobile developers may bypass MCS altogether and, for example, call the end enterprise systems, but they will miss out on additional benefits from MCS like such tools as logging, diagnostics and analytics functionality. And remember, when applications break and everyone starts panicking, it's these sort of tools that will prove invaluable in working out what's gone wrong. As MCS is the gateway to the APIs, it also serves as a useful gateway for controlling authentication and authorization of the mobile app users to the services provided by MCS. In association, each mobile backend is configured with an MCS realm containing the use and users and roles of your app. As we mentioned earlier, as the gateway to MCS, in creating a mobile backend for a specific mobile app, the mobile backend publishes one or more APIs that the mobile app requires access to and will consume. The mobile apps themselves predominantly access these mobile backend APIs through REST web services or a MCS mobile client SDK for the specific mobile platform, iOS or Android for example, which itself relies on REST calls under the covers. Like web services in general, the actual underlying implementation of the REST web services is hidden from the mobile developer, so they are burdened with the implementation details. Under the covers in MCS, the service core might make use of numerous core platform APIs provided by MCS, such as push, not push notifications, storage or sync, as well as custom APIs written in Node.js to call out to external enterprise systems. Stepping away from the APIs and considering the mobile backend as a unit, MCS supports creating one or more mobile backends to support one or more mobile applications. Or, you're free to create multiple mobile backends to serve different sets of applications or business needs, though there is a constraint around user realms that we'll need to make clear in a later episode. Finally, something that will be covered in a lot more detail in later episodes, a very important area, is that the mobile backend itself can be created, updated, published and versioned as a unit, allowing developers to clearly control the life cycle of a mobile app and its services as a whole aligned with different releases of the mobile apps themselves. This is rather than independently publishing and managing numerous services and APIs within MCS. So the MCS mobile backend is a very powerful concept of controlling the life cycle of your applications. Before we crack on in showing you how to create your first mobile backend, it's worth covering the overall development process you'll undertake with a mobile backend so you become familiar with the steps required, but also familiar with the relating MCS concepts kind of trying to build you up here without trying to overwhelm you with everything at once. So, overall in working with a mobile backend, once you've created it, you'll need to associate a user realm and roles with the MBE that define the mobile users and their privileges for the relating mobile application. You'll also create, configure and expose numerous platform and custom APIs for the mobile application to work with, such as push notifications and storage. In order for a remote mobile application, maybe an Android or an iOS application, to interact with the MCS mobile backend, you'll need to register the app for each mobile operating system platform with the mobile backend itself. From here, our mobile developers will download the MCS mobile client SDK and integrate this SDK into their mobile application to call our MCS mobile backend APIs that were exposed or alternatively write raw REST calls from the mobile app to consume the same APIs if they prefer not to use the MCS SDK. 
with all this in place and wrapping up your development you will then go through many cycles of testing and debugging and diagnosing issues yes many many cycles of testing and debugging i mean none of us write programs without bugs these days but this is where mcs shines because it also provides substantial logging diagnostic and analytic capabilities to work with and finally, once you're happy with the result, you can publish and deploy the mobile backend to the next MCS environment, from the development environment to the staging or production environments, essentially managing the mobile backend's life cycle. Right, there you have it. With the MCS mobile backend theory and development process out of the way, I now encourage you to check out the next episodes, which will get you on your way to creating your very first mobile backend.